Hello, this is Arthur Hill with StockCharts.com. You are tuned into a video edition of The Mailbag, and today we're going to show you three different ways to use an advanced decline indicator. So in this example, we're going to use AD% percent for the S&P 500. And what exactly is AD%? Percent? Well, first of all, there's the symbol at the top, dollar SPX ADP. Okay, and we're going to enter that into our chart and we're going to press enter and we're going to get a chart and it's got three different charts but before i explain these three different indicators that i'm showing let me explain 80 percent it's basically the number of advances less the number of declines divided by the total number of issues so if you have 300 advances one day and 200 declines your net is going to be 300 minus 200 which should be plus 100 and you're going to divide that by 500. And so that would give you a plus 20% reading for AD percent. So that's basically a breadth indicator that shows you the degree of participation. So if you get an advance and AD percent is at plus 70% or higher, that shows broad participation in the advance. If you get an advance and 80% hits plus 10% or something like that, a low reading, then that shows a narrow advance, narrow participation. So there are three indicators that I like to use based on AD percent. The first one is just the AD line, and that's a cumulative measure of AD percent. And you can see the AD line will decline as AD percent falls and rise when AD percent is positive, as it did there in December. And then we had a streak here in February where it's positive for several days and the AD line moved to a new high. And that affirms the overall uptrend in the market. Now the middle indicator window shows AD percent in its raw form. And I like to use that to just to judge each day's AD percent reading. And you can see we got several days above 50% here in February. There at the end of January, we had several days that were quite low, uh, almost near minus 100%, so some heavy selling pressure, and even at the beginning of February. And then the third indicator is the 20-day EMA of AD%. percent. I'll show you down in the indicator section below how I created it, but first let me explain what it's doing. Basically, it's oscillating above and below the zero line, and so you can see it kind of trends down with the market and then you got a breakout and then it kind of corrected with the market and you got a breakout in November. And then we had a pullback in November, December and then the breakout. And we had a pullback in January and then the breakout the first week of February. So it's a little bit more sensitive than the AD line and it works as an oscillator. And so you can look for oversold readings and you look for earlier breakouts. In this next section, I'm going to show you how I added these indicators to this chart. All right, so let me show you how I created these three indicators. Now, as I showed you at the top here, we have in the main symbol box dollar SPX ADP. And then just below the chart, you have your chart attributes section, and that's where you can make your changes. Okay, so what I've done is I've got daily, and to show it as an AD line, I click that drop down menu under type and I selected cumulative, and that makes it as an AD line. And then I added a moving average as an overlay. Now, for the two indicator windows, you have to scroll down a little bit further to the indicator section, and there I added price as an indicator. And for parameters, I entered the symbol $SPX ADP and its position below. And I did that twice. And then you have to click on Advanced Options in order to get the indicators looking the way I have them. Okay, so for the first advanced option, I chose Histogram Format. And that will show the AD percent indicator as a nice histogram with vertical perpendicular bars. You'll have a positive bar for when 80% is positive, a negative bar when 80% is negative. The second indicator, I set it as invisible. 
Okay, and the reason I did that is because I don't want to see it. And then you can see I added an indicator to that indicator as an overlay. I added an exponential moving average and I set the parameters at 20. So that is the only thing that is shown in that box. And so you can set this as a simple moving average and you could have it as 50 days. You can do whatever you want. So I'd recommend that you play around with this indicator and get the oscillator set how you like it. And it does act like an oscillator, a moving average of 80%. Now, before we go, I would just like to let you know that you can find 80%, 80 volume percent, and high low percent for several of the major indices, all nine sector SPDRs, the TSX composite, and the gold miners index. And if you go to the symbol catalog and you search these terms or if you click on the link in the written commentary you'll get this list and there are all the symbols we have the dow transports utilities you can see the gold miners there the s p 400 nasdaq 100 and we scroll down and there are more and more so there are a lot of breadth indicators that you can work with for your analysis purposes and once you've created your chart template, if you will, like the chart I just showed you, you can just enter a symbol. I've got dollar GDX ADP, which is the gold miners advanced decline percent indicator. So there we see the AD line for the gold miners. There we see AD percent for the gold miners and the 50 day SMA for AD percent. If you want that to be a little more sensitive, you could change it to a 20 day EMA or maybe even a 10 day SMA. So that concludes this tutorial on how to use AD%. Thanks very much for tuning in and have a great day.